So, picture your life in a place where everything you do, what you buy, how you behave, is tracked. The government gives you a score, and the score is a measure of how trustworthy you are as a citizen and determines what you're allowed to do, like ever. Boarding a train, getting a mortgage, all goes back to this score. It's called social credit. It sounds like that show Black Mirror, but it's actually happening in China. So how does that change you? Does it change you? What does your life look like when your every move is watched? The system's eyes are in big data, artificial intelligence, and roughly 200 million surveillance cameras. And that's totally fine with Ouyang Haoyu. She's 21, graduated from a good school with solid grades. She's diligent. She's nice. No surprise, she's a 752. That's her rating with Sesame Credit, a private company working with the government on the algorithms for the social credit system. The scores go from 350 to 950 and are based on habits and behavior. Buy clothes or diapers, it's good. A lot of alcohol, too many video games, not so good. How you 752 puts her in model citizen range and gets her discounts and privileges, like using a shared bike without a deposit. She likes it. Her friends do too. They all have pretty high scores. It's a mechanism like uh, pushes you to become a better citizen, to build, to build on the trust, especially on the Chinese market. Because because you're you're not you're, you're not going to be punished if you haven't done anything wrong. I think that's the point. I think the system is working as a as an as a warning or a alert to like to push people to do it yeah. to, to to be a good person. And it's mandatory. When it goes national, social credit scores will be assigned to every one of China's citizens for life. And what's weird is that so many people seem okay with it. It's complicated, but China went from extreme poverty to economic giant pretty quickly. A credit history system didn't grow at the same pace, so people would default on loans and get away with it. Add in scandals around fake food, tainted baby milk, counterfeit goods, and what you've got is a big problem with trust. So. In 2014, the Communist Party called for a system to allow the trustworthy to roam everywhere under heaven while making it hard for the discredited to take a single step. The model is a place called Rongcheng. It's in Shandong province. It's orderly, streets are spotless, cars slow down, which is unheard of in China. Words like honesty and credibility appear on propaganda posters. Display cases show pictures of Rongchong's most honored citizens. You start with a thousand points and you can print out your report anytime. You lose points for things like jaywalking, littering, tossing cigarette butts, or spreading rumors. Cameras do a lot of the surveillance work, but it's pretty analog too like posters that list the ways you can gain or lose points. And each night, local TV shows the surveillance highlights of the day. And then there's Zhou Aini. She's an information collector, a paid enforcer, who walks around and writes down deeds about her neighbors. Like the man who carried a drunk person home. Things like this are good deeds, she said. But the farmer overheard swearing and being rude. Yeah, bad deeds. Her quota is 10 a month. She likes the work, thinks the city's better for it. The thing about the social credit system is that there isn't one single system, not yet. Different places have different rules. So what do you do if you have bad social credit? Well, for one, you talk about it on Weibo, which is like Twitter. There are forums for discredited people to vent and get advice. In Chongqing, we hooked up with Huang Weijun. He had a business until he was sued by a client, and Huang refused to pay 90 grand to settle it. So the court put him on a social credit blacklist, and things got way worse. 
He explains that being blacklisted means he can't buy airplane or train tickets. When he tries, a message pops up saying he's discredited. By the end of last year, blacklisted people were blocked from booking 23 million flights and 5 million high-speed train trips. And the list goes on. Being discredited makes it hard to get a job, a loan, a hotel room, or put kids in certain schools. Then there's the public shaming. Photo galleries of blacklisted citizens. There's even an app that shows who around you is in debt. In China, being monitored is nothing new, but algorithmic surveillance makes it possible to collect data to build detailed profiles of people, especially the ones not loyal to the government. Of all the video surveillance cameras on the planet right now, nearly half of them are in China. Are people bothered by privacy concerns? So we think uh, it's a lot of camera keep the safety is uh, really good. Very good things. A lot of people, we can accept it. And cameras are getting smarter. So the information that comes up from my image identifies that I'm female, middle age, uh, talks about whether I'm wearing glasses, the shape of my face. AI is taking them next level. They can do more than just see. They actually understand who they're seeing. So at what point can the technology know too much? Does it already? In most time, people don't care about it. But uh, if the technology learns too much, for example, cross the right line, it's not very good. How far off are we from needing to draw those red lines? It's very hard to say. I think uh, maybe decades, decades, I mean 10 years or 20 years, 15 years, maybe, maybe. That's not very long. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And where does it all go? How you isn't so bothered. Her sesame score is high. Life is good and she's used to living most of it online. Soon, her education and medical records and any run-ins with the law will factor into her social credit score. And wherever she goes, someone will follow and ask, who can you trust? Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.